Hello there everyone, and welcome back to Shogun 2 and the Siege of Kyoto. The Imperial capital lays before us in smoldering ashes. Well, soon it will be anyways. Um, so I had a little problem recording this episode where I forgot to... Or, well, my voice got messed up and I didn't want to do like a voiceover of what I'd done, so instead what we're doing is we're looking at the replays. I'm gonna talk over them, so uh, it's gonna be live in a certain kind of way, but not really at the same time. I thought this would be better than to uh, speak over what I've already recorded. Anyways, we've managed to march all the way to Kyoto, as you kinda can see. We can see back there is the Imperial Palace, and. We're about to break in, so this siege wasn't that spectacular. Um, that's why I uh, started quite a bit into the the actual battle here, um, because a lot of the beginning was just blowing up the main wall or the front wall here and setting every single house on fire. So quite quickly here, um, the enemy is actually going to try to storm the two units I've sent in. So I'm only sending in two normal line infantry units to begin with, just to clear off the few guys that were here. And then I thought, okay, so I'll bring, in, bring everyone into the, the courtyard here, and then I'll uh, r record um, what the like attack towards the inner courtyard. But the thing is, the enemy marches every single one of their units out there, more or less to attack us out here, which I thought was uh, pretty strange, um, why they wouldn't hold their uh, the ground there, that was quite good. The upside to this is of course that when I actually recorded this, I wasn't able to record this start, I missed this part, so uh, in that way this will actually be a lot better. Um, so we're gonna look at these guys. For some reason, I'm not entirely sure, but they're gonna wait for a very long time, my guys, before they start to shoot. I think I'll order them to start shooting. And there we go. So right when the enemy is almost like right on top of it, then they start shooting. And I'd order the artillery to open fire on that unit that's walking right in front here. And so there's a high risk of friendly artillery fire. And the interesting thing here is, of course, the enemy retreats straight through our lines rather than trying to go back. And one by one, the houses here are being set ablaze for the fact that the artillery is blasting. This one's really interesting, so look at how close they stop at each other. They, well, well, for a little bit at least. And then the fighting starts off there. So very intense fighting. At the same time as all of this is happening, there's still artillery strikes coming in. Which I think, I mean, this is probably one of the most like awesome melee fighting I've seen at least or in this campaign with this close-up carnage um, so I thought this was really bloody cool this looked really cool um, now they are gonna try to flank us with most of their army coming in here so this is gonna be quite a tough fight where this unit is gonna suffer heavily however as you just possibly saw a bit of shrapnel shots coming in, uh, cutting into these men. So they're trying their best at least to inflict damage on us. And it's kind of working. As we can see. But this is more or less the bulk of the fighting for... Um, for this siege. There is no, oh, there's another one coming down there. But there isn't going to be much fighting out here more than this. Uh, since most of the units are actually marched out to try to, trying to fight us out here. 
Are they playing music? It sounded a bit like they were playing music. I guess it's just a, playing a bit of trumpets. We got more men coming down. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna relocate one of these units to try and uh, make sure to stop them. At this point, these guys are done for. Oh, you know what? I think I just moved this one around, so I turned them around to face them down there, so I didn't... Oh, yes! We're gonna sandwich them, so fire from either side here into these guys. Risk of friendly fire, of course. Not very nice. And once again, look at how close these guys are. I mean, he, f he could point him with a bayonet right up, right up the bum bum, which he actually did a little bit. Oh, there's no problem here, sir. I'm just gonna stand and reload right when the enemy is right behind me. And, the, well, the guys that are retreating coming under fire here from the main army that's situated out here. So, not a lot of uh, soldiers are gonna make it out of this. But that is more or less the fighting for the siege. Um, there's a few units left, but they're mostly uh, going to just collapse. Oh, I didn't. R I don't remember this where they lined up here. Kind of interesting to hide in between the houses like that. But I think this is the point where I. Uh, move these guys out and I move the guard infantry in so the uh, the guards it's time for the guards to move in and deal with what's left here in town since we can see these two are very depleted at this point and uh, for some reason they didn't want to start firing at these guys but yeah, this was the Siege of Kyoto. We've got another battle coming up right after this, which is, um, there was, um, they, they had actually a full stack in here, or I thought they had a full stack anyways, but it wasn't that strong, and as we can see, I mostly already killed, um, killed all of the enemy troops. But what they did have was, they had a number of full stacks that came to reinforce but to reinforce they had to uh, pass a bridge, or at least I thought they had to pass a bridge. But I guess since I was... No, you know what? Yes, they did have to pass a bridge, but I preemptively uh, attacked, as I recall, every single house there is on fire in town. Um, so yeah, I think we've seen enough of this. The guards are quickly going to just go ahead and clean up what's left here, but look at that. The entire town is just set ablaze. So I think what we'll do is we'll, uh, we're done with this one, so let's go ahead and jump over into uh, the other battle. The battle to stop the reinforcements to, or the, the uh, big armies to coming to retake Kyoto. And so here we are, on the fields of Yamashiro. The British army is marching in. We already have one stationed here. It's Gardner. But this is the army that marched very quickly from uh, the siege of Kyoto. Uh, they took very few casualties. Um, and now they are here to... Uh, you know what? Um, th yeah, this was part of the army that attacked Kyoto. But not all of it. Anyways, they've forced marched over here and they're ready to help out Gardner to take on the enemy. The plan is for Gardner to hold a thin red line as per usual. Um, spread out along here. Um, and then John Alcock is gonna come in. There's gonna be an opportunity because the enemy is actually gonna leave the high ground to concentrate all their forces down in this valley. So there's an opportunity for him to march up here um, and take possession of the hills and then the fighting is basically gonna go down 
in this kind of an area. And right now it's just my artillery that's blasting away at the enemy units. There's quite a few of them and there's going to be even more as they are getting reinforcements. So there's going to be, at some point there's going to be just a big cluster here in the center of uh, uh, troops. And then we can see Gardner's army right here with his artillery. At this point in the campaign, um, I've actually managed to get the Armstrong guns up to the front line and also the machine guns or the Gatling guns. So hopefully, um, in the next video, I'll most likely get a battle with a Gatling gun. Um, the Armstrong gun isn't that interesting, but the Gatling gun will be. And we'll see how that is and hopefully I'll pretty quickly be able to move on Tokyo. And then the campaign will obviously be over. So we're looking at this is video 19. So maybe 2021 will be the last one. Uh, there will be a bit of a follow up for this mod. Because I believe it was the creator of the mod. Actually commented on one of my videos. And there's an update. Which I think it adds nations and stuff. And some improvements. I think they fixed the bug with the flag guy. Uh, moving around in a weird way um, So I think they fixed that and a few other things so that should be nice I'm not entirely sure if they added the Prussians or the Russians or who they've added um, But it's gonna be cool to check that out So I'm gonna check that out and then since I took suggestions from you guys uh, there was quite a lot that uh, liked the comment about the um, Great Northern War, or Great, yeah, the Great Nordic War, uh, as Sweden, so that will be for Empire Total War, and uh, at first I thought, you know, I could do that in Darth Mod, but um, I, I know the people have been asking for, what's the other one? Um, there's an, oh, now I can't remember what it's called. Um, but there's another one called some some along the line of You know what I'll have to marinate on that see if I can remember that but there's another mod anyways And I'm looking at it right now. There's uh, I have to um, Use a lot of sub mods and stuff to make it actually workable because in the standard sort of configuration of that mod um, it would take me like five turns or something just moving from Stockholm down to um, Copenhagen and that's a bit much especially since there's two turns per year or something so that would make it like what two and a half years to march an army from Stockholm down to Copenhagen which is just ridiculous and there was few other things uh, with the morale system and you know um, making cavalry more useful it was not very useful but then again I'm, I'm looking at the different sub mods and not all of them are working in the and also I'm not entirely sure the thing is um, what you want to do with Empire or really most things is you want to add stuff there's not often time you want to remove stuff and this mod removed so many things it removed a lot of interesting diplomatic solutions so Giving territory, buying territory. I can understand that in Empire because usually the AI sort of goes, Oh, you know what? Do you want to trade Jamaica for Finland? And then if you don't agree to that, they'll attack you, which is a bit strange. Um, then there was, all, the, there was also some stuff about, you know, don't start with, with money. Uh, and then when you, the money you actually make, I think Sweden made 800 or something gold. <laughs> to start off with which is and that was roughly the price of a unit and you didn't start with any money at all So that means you have to wait one turn until you get money and then you have to you know That's not very interesting and that's also a problem with just playing trying to do the Great Northern War in sort of in a mod that hasn't set that up as sort of a scenario because you know Sweden and uh, um, Russia start next to each other and there's only one province until you reach Moscow so 
you know, a, a war like that would rather quickly <laughs> be over um, as you were just being able to march directly to Moscow, take that and kind of win the, uh, the war in a sense. Uh, or at least, I mean, you could continue a little bit uh, to take the rest of Russia, but... Um, and then also the fact that you won massive battles like the one we're looking at here with massives of troops. So you won lots of Swedish troops marching in and uh, Russians and uh, cannons and so forth. But when you start off that close and that early in the campaign, um, I mean, you you won't be able to... Well, you, maybe you'll be able to feel like one full army. And then the Russians will field one army, and then, I mean, you base uh, once you've defeated that, you're in Moscow. So, I'm not entirely sure how, how, I, how I exactly will set that up, if I actually will um, maybe um, uh, go ahead and uh, do a few turns just to let it go a bit. Um, so, I'm not entirely sure. Well, I'll have to take a look at that. Same with a lot of the... Um, different stuff, the sub-mods and shit you have to, uh, that I have to add on to it because it, in its sort of standard um, or in the... Uh, what, like, yeah. So there's a lot of things to be done before that's ready. Um, Legeal should be done. Maybe it's even released upon already uh, before this video. So uh, that'll be out. And uh, we'll see what you think about that. Kind of went overboard there with uh, the sort of um, the way the the way that I role play it. So we'll see how that goes. So right now we can see the main battle is going off. The enemy is trying to retake the hill. I've set up my troops on the hill, and um, there's a bit of micromanagement problem. So I marched up. But you have to really be careful that you manage to set the men up in, you know, good positions because otherwise they will not have a good line of sight. So few of these units, obviously like this one, the enemy has to come really close for the unit to actually see and be able to fire. These guys got a good line of sight so they'll be able to put down a hell of a lot of fire. So there's an interesting thing that's going to go down here and I'm not entirely sure if it was friendly fire or if it was enemy fire. Oh yes, it was enemy fire. So the faction leader, my faction leader actually gets wounded here. He gets shot off his horse and that's due to the, I think they're called the blunderbuss unit, these guys. So that you can see they've got quite a massive musket there, so that they fired sort of like canister shot going through here. And that wounded the faction leader. I'm not entirely sure where he's... if he's lying here. You know what? He was probably thrown away uh, further back here somewhere, somewhere. Oh wait, there he is, I think. No, nope, that's not him. He was thrown away at least, somewhere, over the rainbow. And obviously that's not nice that a full star general gets wounded like that. But uh, the red, the, the thin red line is still holding, and you can just see the amount of troops here. First, when I actually played the battle, I thought that my own cannons had ripped through and accidentally shot him. But then, uh, once I actually looked at the replay. I noticed that it was those blunderbuss guys that caused the sort of uh, the men to fly away in that in that sense. Heavy concentration of enemy troops right here. Not very good because not all of them, of course, are able to fire, and they make quite a nice target for my superior accuracy. And we, you can see, we ha we are maximizing our firepower. And not only in one line, but two lines on top of each other. So massive amounts of casualties here for the enemy. And we can just go through here and see all the carnage of the Japanese troops that try to retake the hill. So uh, I actually... Now you are going to have to take my word on this, but I actually estimated the 
casualty rate down to... I was only about 300 men off. Um, so I think I said uh, that... I s yes, I said that about 6,500 men of the enemy died on the battlefield. But the actual fact was there was 6,800, so about a 300 man difference. Um, so I was pretty pretty pleased myself with that, but uh, since for some reason I forgot to record my voice, um, well, you're gonna have to just take my word for it. Look at all of these. Like ants. Who's gonna clean this up? 6,000 men dead across the field. I can't remember exactly how many men we lost. But it was, I think, less than a thousand out of uh, our army. And the highest uh, units were, I believe it was one of these um, King's Own that killed the most. They killed 730, something like that. And there we have it. Unfortunately, I think we're going to just end it like this. And then I'll have to update you on what's going on on the campaign map in the next video where we hopefully have set it up so I, I'm preparing to launch the navy or maybe I'm ready to land the navy because at this point I've been able to get the big ironclads the the victory classes uh, and you can get those in three different kinds of setups basically so I have got plenty of those ships and those navies I mean, they they can out resolve anything, so I'm just cutting through the enemy. The only problem is now that more or less every other faction has declared war on me or betrayed me. So I only really have the island of the Tokushimas left on my side. Um, so what we... I, I guess I shouldn't just go into close contact with my, with my enemies. Um, anyways... I hope you guys enjoyed this, and hopefully, I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!